The former president taking a rare step out of his comfort zone this week for an interview with NPR Stevens, keep only to bail out and head right back there. Trump clinging to his big lie, insisting it's the future of the Republican Party. Is it a disadvantage for Republicans to keep talking about the 2020 election in 2022? No, I think it's an advantage because otherwise they're going to do it again in 22 and 24. But eventually hanging up after being pressed on his lies about election fraud in 2020. The only way it's not going to happen again is you have to solve the problem of the presidential rigged election of 2020. Uh, so Mr. Steve, President, if I wait, 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 I one more question. It. I want to ask about a court hearing yesterday on January 6th. Judge Amit Mehta, he's gone. Okay. Gone. Hung up. Steve uh, Inkscape joins me now. He is the host of NPR's Morning Edition. I get to see I get to see you and just sort of listen to your mellifluous voice, Steve. Thank you so much. By the way, great interview. I appreciate you doing this. You have been trying Thank you. to interview Trump for about six years now, and you were clearly ready for him. These days, he normally only does right-wing press. He had to have known what he was in store for when he's talking to a journalist like yourself. What do you think he hoped to achieve by speaking to NPR's audience? I don't really know. We speculated about that ourselves. It's interesting timing. It's after the anniversary of the January 6th events. It's looking toward the 2022 election. And that is what we wanted to talk about and what he largely agreed to talk about is how he is intending to lead his party in the months and years ahead. That's the reason to talk to this particular former president. Some people ask why even talk to Donald Trump as a private citizen. But of course, he's very powerful as the leader of the Republican Party. Do you think he realized that did someone screw up and, and they, they didn't realize that it was NPR, like a fact-based journalist, journalistic operation? Honestly, I can't tell you the answer to that, Don. All I know is this time he came to the phone. Mm -hmm. We did first ask for him in 2015. I was told just before the Iowa caucuses in 2016, he will talk to you after Iowa. Mm -hmm. So he kept his word. It's six years later, but still after <laughs> Iowa. And so he did come to the phone eventually. There have been a number of other times over the years, and we thought we were going to get a call from him, and it didn't happen, and this time it did. And so we put the questions to him that we had on our mind until we ran out of time. It was interesting at listening to the interview because it was like all the logic and all of his answers were sort of circular uh, with no evidence. He kept insisting that states like Arizona saw fraud, even though an audit backed by his allies found no evidence of that, as you pointed out. This is what he said when you asked him about members of his own party who aren't carrying water for the big lie. Here it is. Why did Republican officials in Arizona accept the results then? Because they're rhinos, and frankly, a lot of people are questioning that. Why is it that you think that the vast majority of your allies in the United States Senate are not standing behind you? We did have that statement by Mike Reynolds. Because Mitch McConnell is a loser, and frankly, Mitch McConnell, if he were uh, on the other side and if Schumer were put in his position, he would have been fighting this like you've never seen before. Well, it, it is obvious that he doesn't want any dissent in his own ranks, but I mean, there are some very, there are tiny cracks there. Do you think this kind of bullying will work with his pulpit d diminished this time? Well, there are a lot of Republican officials and Republicans who have run elections or know how elections are run, who know that his claims are entirely false and also believe that they can be politically damaging. Let's remember the complexity for the Republican Party. The vast majority of people who identify as Republican tell pollsters that they believe uh, Trump's lies about the 2020 election, but the vast majority of Americans overall do not. So you create a possibility of Republicans winning primaries while making claims that turn off voters in the general election, and Republicans potentially lose seats they could gain in 2022, mm. where things look very favorable for them. So there are a lot of Republican office holders, people who know the facts, people who know how elections work, who would really like to move on from this, but that splits them from a lot of Republican voters. And also, we should be clear, a lot of the conservative media, right-wing media, uh, right-wing radio talk show hosts who have promoted more of Trump's side of the argument. And so there's going to be something of a debate this year for Republicans about how they position themselves, given the real advantages they have in this election year. I, I want to play that again. As I said, the interview was fascinating. I just want to play another bit of the interview where I think you really hit on an important point, pushing back on the former president. Here it is. 
president. Let me ask you this question. How come Biden couldn't attract 20 people for a crowd? How come when he went to speak in different locations, nobody came to watch? But all of a sudden, he got 80 million votes. If you'll, nobody believes If you forgive me, maybe because the election was about you. But, right, it was a vote against him, which he probably doesn't understand. But there, there's always been, for him, it's always been about optics. Yet he seems unable to see why he lost to Joe Biden. Do you think he still doesn't understand the 2020 election, what it was about? I, I'm not any better than anybody else getting into the president's mind. But I can say that in going to interview him, we can see how his thinking has adapted to new information, new circumstances. The reality is that his defeat is even more conclusively proven today than it was one year ago. Things have happened like the Arizona audit by his own allies, which claimed to find a lot of administrative errors, but they also admitted that the ballots added up for Joe Biden to have won Arizona. There's more and more evidence against the former president rather than the opposite, but he manages to keep expanding his circle of people who are opposed to him, who are disloyal, who are part of a conspiracy. Uh, it's a little vague as to what they are, as a matter of fact, but there are more and more culprits that get worked into his theory so that he can continue insist on insisting that he won in spite of even more evidence. Did he ever at any point during the interview, Steve, point out anything factual? Because every time you, you challenged him on it, again, as I said, it was a, a sort of a circular, well, this person is against me and this person is disloyal and they found all of this information. And when you say they didn't, he says, oh, that's, that, that's just not true. But did he ever point to any evidence or any facts? No, no. I mean, a lot of it is not really a fact that you can check. Like, and, and a lot of it is a fact that you can check and is wrong. Like he says, Joe Biden had 20 people at a rally. Joe Biden didn't have 20 people at rallies. He might not have had as giant a rally as Donald Trump did. And so Trump draws on that and says, how did he possibly get 80 million votes? Well, the one thing doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the other. And so he's drawing these logical inferences that aren't based on fact. And I'm not saying that to be for him or against him or in any way critical, but descriptive. That's, That's just truth. what he did yeah. in the interview. Yeah, it's just, it, it is what it is. It's the truth. Steve, again, great interview. And I appreciate you coming on. Keep up the great work. Thanks for appearing. Thank you. Glad to do it.